We have with us today the most fresh and sweet news from the Korean bio industry. My name is Juri Huang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest biotech issues today for you. So don't forget to subscribe, like and set your alarm for bio TV. For today's bio news, we will bring you news on Samsung Biologics and Saltrion's large-scale investment in Songdo Incheon, as well as updates on Korea's development of COVID-19 treatments and vaccines. In addition, we have prepared briefs on Korea Bio's member companies, so don't miss out. On November 18th, in response to the South Korean government's announcement of the policy to boost the commercialization of the biohealth industry, Samsung Biologics and Celtrion announced that they would start building their fourth plant and third plant, respectively, in Songdo. Samsung Biologics planned its fourth plant to hold 256,000 liters of production capacity, the world's largest for a single production plant. When its fourth plant starts operating in year 2023, Samsung Biologics will also secure the ability to produce a total of 620,000 liters of biopharmaceuticals from Songdo alone. Celtrion has also announced that it would build its third plant and a global biotechnology research center in Songdo. When construction is completed, Celtrion is expected to secure a production capacity of 450,000 liters in South Korea alone. The construction of the company's third plant and research center combined is estimated to create around 3,000 new employment. As Samsung Biologics and Celtrion have unveiled their large-scale investment plan, Songdo is bound to become an undeniable biopharmaceutical production base and biocluster. With Yonsei University alongside other universities and research institutes having set foot in Songdo, which houses a number of bio companies including Samsung Biologics, Songdo is well equipped to become a biocluster. Here's hoping that Songdo equipped with abundant logistic resources such as Incheon Airport and Incheon Port will grow into world-class bio-industry mecca and will become a center of realizing the dream of established bio-industry in South Korea. At a bio-industry event held in Songdo, Incheon on November 18th, South Korean President Moon Jae-in said that South Korea would be able to release into the market antibody drugs and plasma drugs for the treatment of COVID-19 at the end of the year. Release into the market means that antibody and plasma drugs will be available to a more extended number of COVID-19 patients. The COVID-19 antibody drug that is currently being developed by Celtrion CTP-59 is currently undergoing phase 2 and 3 clinical trials. And once the efficacy and safety of CTP-59 have been verified, Celtrion will apply for emergency approval for the use of the drug by the end of the year. GC Pharma, on the other hand, is developing a plasma drug to be used in the treatment of COVID-19. The plasma drug that is currently being developed by GC Pharma, GC5131A, is currently undergoing a phase 2 clinical trial in high-risk patients at 12 medical institutions in South Korea. Now let's take a look at the current status of vaccine development. Genexene is conducting a clinical trial for DNA vaccine GX19. Phase 1 and partial phase 2 clinical trials of the vaccine are currently underway simultaneously, with the companies recently announcing that it would conduct a phase 3 clinical trial of the vaccine in conjunction with Calbe, the largest pharmaceutical company in Indonesia. SK Bioscience has also obtained final approval from the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety for its phase 1 clinical trial plan for COVID-19 vaccine candidate substance. In addition to these companies, Meditox, Gene One Life Science, and others are developing vaccines for COVID-19 as well. The Ministry of Food and Drug Safety is also set to participate in the COVID-19 vaccine prequalification by the World Health Organization. This move is expected to actively contribute to the international community's efforts to overcome the COVID-19 crisis and to serve as an opportunity for South Korea's vaccine approval criteria to be recognized internationally. Hanmi Pharmaceuticals has become the world's first company to succeed in making a pill containing four substances, the first of its kind among drugs for treating hypertension and dyslipidemia. The company has made an 
Amosartan XQ by adding a dyslipidemia treatment substance called azetimib to its existing three medication mixture drug, Amosartan Q, by obtaining approval for a four medication mixture drug. Hami Pharmaceutical has once again proved its global competitiveness. Helix Myth, which has become the world's first company to develop a storage formulation that enables the long-term storage of plasma DNA in refrigeration by putting it in disposable syringes. Engensys, which is currently being developed by Helix Myth, is a plasma DNA treatment that expresses hepatocyte growth factor. Despite its excellent safety and effectiveness, it needs to be injected several times into patients on each visit. But Halleck Smith has greatly improved the convenience of the use of drug with the development of a special formulation. The plasma DNA injection formulation is set to be the world's first of its kind developed for commercial purposes. Well, that's all for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and set your alarm for BioTV. Please add Korea Bio as a friend on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. We'll be back with issues of the Korean bio industry in just two weeks.